Wherever you see research happening in a hospital in London, that's Lawson. The Lawson Health Research Institute covers two hospitals, six hospital sites, around 1,200 people. Patients expect to have the very best healthcare. The best healthcare is always delivering the latest innovations. And our approach at Lawson is to start with a clinical problem, take that back to the bench, find a solution, and then test it back again at the bedside. We tend to treat people as an average subject and hope by prescribing average dose of a medication that they would respond predictably. We know now our genetic variations are widely different. Our body's ability to handle drugs significantly differ. What we wanted to do was really get at the patient level, at their DNA level, to individualize or personalize therapies. Now we're embarking on use of such genomics information to deliver patient care. How does children's socioeconomic disadvantage influence their health and well-being? More and more what we've discovered is that social stressors, as we call them, stress that might arise from financial difficulty or from family conflict, actually has an impact on our biology. The research we do here at Children's Health Research Institute will contribute to better health for children across their life course. Can we improve the delivery of mental health services through the use of smart technologies? The clients in our study will be having access to these personalized health records. Their care plan will be available. Their crisis plan will be available. We will actually have a mood monitor for them. At the very first sign of difficulty, they can communicate immediately with their care provider. We can have really early intervention. Molecular imaging is one of the most exciting developments in medicine today. Our research focuses on new imaging techniques. With the PET MRI, we are using two separate methods of three-dimensional imaging at the same time and combining those images to produce an enhanced visualization. It will mean that we can do things we can't do in any other way, which will improve care and save lives. Our center is primarily focused in understanding the causes to fight sepsis. Better understanding definitely drives into better treatment and the developing of potential new treatments. With our unique interaction between basic scientists and clinical researchers, we made significant progress and hope to be successful in the future. What if we had an intervention that would reduce the patient's chance of dying or rehospitalization after a heart attack by 20 to 25%? We're actively engaged by having the professionals that run cardiac rehab programs oversee the inpatient setting best practice delivery in terms of appropriate medications and lifestyle interventions, helping the patient achieve a level of wellness. Because after all, we want patients not to be patients. We want them to return to their home environment as soon as possible and never have to get admitted to hospital again. What if we can target radiation more precisely than we could have even imagined 10 years ago. And can we use that radiation to improve our patients' lives? This new treatment is called stereotactic radiation. And what that means is it's really, really precise and really powerful. It's much more pinpointed where there are beams of radiation coming from all different angles, all hitting the tumor, but giving very low doses to the normal parts of the body. The patients who go in the study, they get this treatment and we learn from them and the whole world will learn from them. How does exercise get implemented into daily life? We know why people should exercise, we know how they should actually do it, but we don't know how to get people to engage in activity on a regular basis and sustain it over time. Healthy Steps is an initiative to take our knowledge to the bedside, to take the right steps towards achieving a healthy lifestyle. It engages communities, provides them programs, it goes to physicians, allowing them to deal with patients in their practice better, and it allows patients to self-manage through technologies. What if we could train surgeons to operate in a simulated environment so that the very first time they touch a patient, they have already achieved a designated level of proficiency. The pace of change of surgical technology now is not just rapid, but it's accelerating. We now have a problem where new technologies are coming to market minute by minute. We've got a whole workforce of surgeons out there on the front line of care that need to learn how to use that technology quickly. We're developing computer-based virtual reality systems that allow us to actually practice surgery in the laboratory on a virtual patient. The future of research at Lawson is to look not at where healthcare is now, but where healthcare will be or could be in 10 years' time, in 15 years' time. That doesn't happen by chance. That is all the mission of hospital-based research.